Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the re-release of the AMT Peterbilt Cab Over Pacemaker 352 125 scale kit, number AMT 759 by round 2. This venerable kit was first released in 1970 and has seen multiple releases over the years through decal changes. AMT considers this a skill level 3 kit and you get over 250 parts molded in white, chrome, clear and clear red with vinyl tires and metal axles. The decals are water slide and this version is the Bicentennial Edition 1976. The instructions are typical old style AMT and many of the parts are the same as those found in the Pete California hauler kit. In fact the motor, the whole chrome sprue and interior parts are identical. While the frame is shorter, you end up with extra parts because you get all the plates and air tanks for the 359 that you won't use on this build. But what modeler doesn't like extra parts? The motor is nice, nicely detailed and the frame builds straight. The interior tub and sleeper area is fully detailed. The cab is a single piece and it's straight and solid. The chrome is crisp and clean, but flash is an issue throughout the kit because of the old mold design and you'll need to take extra time to clean up the parts before assembly. Overall size is 10 inches in length, 4 inches in width, and 6 inches in height. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see, they're very colorful and the registry is good. I strongly recommend using some decal setting solution to make it fit those contours, but as always, use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. For the most part, I use Model Master liquid cement for assembly, but sometimes some super glue for strength and white glue is needed for clear parts. Paints are usually Tamiya acrylic bottle paints run through an airbrush or rattle can spray paints for things like primer coats. Gather these parts to build the motor and you can assemble most of them prior to painting and we'll also paint some of the chrome pieces uh, because I just I prefer not to have chrome on my big rig motors. but. First we'll uh, assemble the block, the oil pan, the heads, the lower and upper front covers, transmission rear plate oil filter, the blower drive case front and back, and the oil filler tube. Assemble the blower halves in front and rear and add the governor. On the valve cover add the oil filler. Then note that uh, Peterbilt would often uh, custom paint the motors to match or contrast their frames and bodies uh, per the customer's order. Uh, so I painted the block red with an aluminum transmission. The governor is aluminum, as is the oil cooler, and the exhaust manifolds are steel. The starter is black with gold solenoid, and the belt is flat black. Add the blower and the valve covers to the motor's top, and then add the oil cooler and exhaust manifolds and starter. Install the air compressor and add the belt. And note that I kind of gave the chrome a uh, black wash here to tone down that chrome. Give those tires uh, a road used look by um, just kind of pressing the tread onto uh, some fine sandpaper and just roll the tread around and it'll sand off the glossy surface leaving the roughed up tread that resembles road wear. Paint the wheel hubs either body color or chassis color and insert the hub into the rim. Then insert the rim into the tire and super glue the trim ring to the rim's edge. Paint the rear drum a chassis color and then insert a tire into each of the eight rims and super glue the trim rings to the rim edges. Now the inner rings have no lugs so attach the inner rim to the drum then attach an outer rim to the inner rim. Use some super glue here. Grab these pieces to assemble the chassis. The rear springs are placed on the frame rails as well as the front springs. And starting with one rail install the cross members in place one at a time. Once all are in place add the other rail and add the end cap. Now note to make sure that the frame is straight and paint it red. You may need to put it under some warm water to make sure that it is straightened out. We'll use these parts to install the rear air ride. The mounts are painted chassis color and the bags and shocks are flat black with the tops and bottoms of the bags chassis color. Add the bags to the mounts and slide the mounts in place adding the shocks to the frame and the mounts on their respective pins. Next we'll install the front suspension, add the tie rod to the axle, insert the pins into the spindle ends and install those to the axle ends. Now paint the axle red, paint the shocks flat black 
The steering box, pitman arm, and idler arm are flat black too. Install the axle onto the springs and add the shocks. Install the steering box and add the pitman arm with the idler arm connected to it and the axle. Then add the front tires. Gather these parts for the rear suspension and assemble the axles. On the forward rear axle, add the gearbox. Add the backing plates to the axle ends, then install the brake chambers onto the mechanics and that to the backing plates. Now paint those units red. The rear drive shaft is steel. Install the rear axle, add the drive shaft, add the front rear axle, then install the tires with the metal axle rods. Finish off the motor with these pieces and install it. Paint the belts flat black and the fan flat black. Then install the upper radiator hose and the lower radiator hose. Glue the alternator onto the small belt and add that to the motor. On the large belt, add the fan mount and the fan. Then assemble the air compressor and add it. Install the motor into the frame at this point. Add the belt in place on the front of the motor. Now paint the drive shaft steel and install that from the transmission to the rear axle. The next step takes quite a few parts, so gather these up. Now the fuel tanks are four parts, so assemble the tank and add the ends. Include the step on one set of the tanks, and then paint the tanks. I did mine in blue for my theme, and the straps are aluminum. The air filter and lube finer are assembled, and then assemble the battery box. Add the lube finer mount and the lube finer to the side of the box. Paint that blue with aluminum straps on the lube finer. The air filter with uh, the mounts is painted blue and it has aluminum straps. Then add the chrome bottom to the air filter and top to the lube finer. Now the fifth wheel plate mount and, uh, and wheel are blue and assemble the shift plate and the mount and paint that flat black. The flaps are flat black. Now scrape the paint off of the Peterbilt logo. Uh, the shifter link is aluminum and the cab lever is white. And paint the shift boot rubber color and the knob black and add it to the shifter plate. Now add the brake light to the tag plate. On the passenger side, working from the front of the chassis, assemble the completed parts. Add the air filter, the cab lever, the chrome air tank, the fuel tank without the step. Now on the driver's side, the oil filter, the shifter mount, in the battery box, the chrome air tank, the fuel tank with a step, and on the chassis top, the pogo stick, the deck plate, and the fifth wheel. Now add the shift linkage from the shift plate to the transmission, and on the rear, add the tag plate. These parts are used to make the interior tub. The interior tub is flat black on the outside, and the inside will be your interior color. I used a light blue with a flat black floor for mine. Add the filler panel and the trim on the door panels and console are wood and gray. The instrument panel on the console is black with silver and white instruments and highlight the knobs and handles in the cab with silver. Now assemble the driver door base and paint that flat black. The passenger and driver seats are light blue. Install the seats and then paint the heater flat black with the Peterbilt logo red and install it. Add the white bed and install it with the light blue curtain. The pedals are black and installed and the brake handle is aluminum and installed too. Assemble the steering column and the wheel and paint it flat black and the spokes are aluminum. Install that with the steering link. In this close-up of the instrument panel you can see that the backlight was painted uh, flat black with wood panels and in the insets and silver trim. Now the instruments are have a white background and some black dial indicators with some silver trim rings. Glue the dash into place into the interior tub. Now we'll start the body assembly and it can be started with the accessories installed that are going to be painted body color prior to doing any more work. Add the visor to the roof line and add the headlight trim to the inside of the cab. Add the steps into the cab and then lightly tack them in place for painting. They'll be removed later and reinstalled uh, to insert the interior. Now the AC unit has the holes already drilled out on the roof to install that. The body has a lot of detail work that will be damaged with sanding so it's best to use a lacquer based primer like Duplicolor or even Tamiya that will etch into the plastic as to sand the body and 
chance of losing details. Prime the whole body with a thin coat of primer as smoothly as possible and then use a scuffing pad and water if needed to smooth out the primer to preserve those details. Rinse and paint the body. I use the stock color of white from PPG as a base coat but you can use any compatible color. Once it's covered completely this will cure and can be decaled. With your gloss color coat in place you can start applying the decals. Now these are um, some thin stripes so once again I strongly recommend that you use some setting solution from somebody like Microscale Industries and apply the longest ones first and then move to the shorter ones um, squeezing out any air bubbles or trapped moisture along the way. Now pluck out the window glass parts and I recommend that you use some of that uh, future, that pledge floor care polish to uh, coat them, uh, dip them into and then let it wick off and dry before you install them with some white glue into the cab. The rooftop accessories are up next. So paint the running light lenses a transparent yellow. Add those lenses to the bezels and install them on the roof. Then assemble and install the horns. Install the AC grill and add the door handles to the doors. Add the wipers to the front of the cab and install the spotlight lenses and glue those to the cab's corners. Uh, remove the entry steps and install the interior tub. Um, then you can reinstall it uh, later on to fit the interior into place at this time. Get these chrome pieces out for the cab to work with. Assemble the stacks and install one to each side of the cab's rear. Now using some super glue, install the mirror mounts and faces. Add the lower mirror also. Then add the grab bars and use some clear glue to add the headlight lenses and then install the headlights. The side markers are installed and the fronts are transparent yellow and the rear is transparent red. Now we're down to some final parts for painting. The radiator, the radiator hoses, the air tank mount, the air vent tube, the air hose, and the main air tube are flat black. The exhaust pipes are chrome, and the step is aluminum. The cross member, cab mounts, and hinges are red. They use a 50-50 flat black and thinner wash on the grill to give it, give it some depth. Install the grill onto the radiator and the three hoses into that, and the radiator is then installed into place. The main air tube goes from the motor to the air filter and the small air tube from the top of the filter. The exhaust really do not connect to the motor but go into place and look like they do. Line them up with the cross member so that the cab on the stacks meets the ends of the exhaust tubes. Add the cab mounts to the chassis then add the top of the air filter to the middle and install it on the tube's uh, ABS slide uh, the tube into the hole and into the cab roof. The uh, air tank mount and the air tank go on to the underside of the floor. Now assemble the hinges onto the bumper and attach that to the inside of the cab. Add the step to the passenger side of the cab too. This beauty's really shaping up now. Super glue the bumper to the frame horns on the chassis then mount the cab to the chassis. That completes construction. Now here's the front of the cab and the back of the cab for a final presentation. As I mentioned, you'll have some extra parts and decals that you don't use, but keep those for future builds. Well there you have it. In all of its refinery, here's our bicentennial beauty. Now we're, we're going to have to caution this by saying that this kit won't fall together. You have to test fit your parts in trim flash a little more than you would with a newer model. But when you're done, you'll have a good sense of pride from the challenge because this is a beautiful looking model. Now, you can display this on your shelf uh, uh, knowing that uh, you, you worked it to perfection. Now, the decals are a little thick, so you'll need to add some uh, setting solution to make sure that those uh, details are not covered. Uh, and uh, always test fit the pieces uh, but the motor is nicely detailed and the cab fit well um, so take your time pay attention and she'll come out just fine we hope you like this tutorial review so be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss any future ones 
and you can find us on Facebook and at our website www.rideonreplicas.com. Thanks. <laughs>